This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 6, this is Section 4, Ambition and Specialization. David In the movie Gandhi, there was a reporter walking with him in South Africa. Gandhi was building ashrams and the reporter from America said, Mr. Gandhi, you are quite an ambitious fellow. Gandhi smiled with his sweet, gentle eyes and said, I hope not. In the world, the response to you are quite an ambitious fellow has been, thank you very much. Something resonated when I heard Gandhi say, I hope not. There was something inside me that leapt with joy. Ooh, this is a different response. Whenever we are ambitious in the worldly sense, we also have a sense of ruthlessness because whenever I am striving to gain something of the world, then I will perceive my brothers at times as an obstruction getting in the way of my ambitions, of what I want. So Gandhi's little statement, I hope not, took on new meaning. I grew up in America, the land of free enterprise and ambition, and I really had very positive connotations associated with the idea of ambition. But when you go deeper into the Course, you hear Jesus saying, You must have noticed an outstanding characteristic of every end that the ego has accepted as its own. When you have achieved it, it has not satisfied you. Text Chapter 8 Section 8 This is why the ego is forced to constantly shift from one goal to the next, hoping it will find something that will satisfy you. When I read that, I recognized that was what I had been doing my whole life. I did it in college with degrees. This degree is not enough. I need this degree. I have done it with relationships. This relationship is good, but I can do better. I have done it with possessions. This car is nice. It has all these extras. Self-steering wheel, rear window, defogger, but I am not really satisfied. It seems never-ending. So in one sense, we are just trying to expose the ego's thought system. A lot of times when reading the Course, There can be a sense of relinquishment. After learning so many things and getting accustomed to a certain lifestyle, the Course comes along and says that our perception is all messed up. Occasionally, Jesus will say, Give up the world. Text, Chapter 30, Section 5 He puts an exclamation point behind it. You know, he must be pretty serious about this idea. But through the ego's lens, the feeling is, I do not want to give up anything. Friend. Right. That is how I feel. David. Exactly. I am accustomed to this. 
Thank you very much, Jesus. But I enjoy this. He is so eager to help us see that pursuing and seeking outside ourselves instead of within where the kingdom is, is a really painful pursuit. At times, the attitude is like, Jesus, I want you to take all the pain and grief and misery out of my life and I want to keep things just the way they are. You can get that it is like asking to reconcile truth and illusion in the sense of seeking outside myself. I want to seek outside myself and I want to be peaceful. The more I have gone into these things, the more I recognize that the need is to embrace the inner, to embrace that light within my mind and to start to let go of the goals and pursuits. When I have goals and pursuits in the world, then I have expectations of how I think the script needs to go to fulfill my goals. In other words, if I have real ambitions, such as being the best tennis player in the world, or the wealthiest man, or the best at anything, it does not really matter what the form of the ambition is. If I have ambitions, then I will have expectations about how I want the script to go. If I am seeking to become a renowned course teacher, then I may start having expectations about how many people are in the audience or how many books I sell. Can you see how it is a setup for pain to have expectations of how you want the script to go, to have outcomes in mind? Friend, and the only way you can have good outcomes is to have those goals set in place from the beginning. It is an insidious thing to say, if I accomplish this goal, then I am better. Not only better than other people, but I am better than I was. And that is a lie. But in and of themselves, they really are not bad. David, we have to get clear on what in and of themselves means. Or if it has any meaning. Lesson 184 gives us the sense that everything we come here to learn is about separation and fragmentation. Every child learns how to label and categorize all of the separate objects. It is taught that this is very important. If you do not do this, you won't be able to make it in the world. This is mature education. You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each one becomes a separate entity, identified by its own name. By this you carve it out of unity. By this you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name. All happenings in terms of place and time. All bodies which are greeted by a name. Workbook Part 1 Introduction 184 You can see that this 
first phase of learning in the world must be released to really come to peace of mind. We must then enter another phase in which we start to let go of the meaning and purpose we have given to everything. We have to release the attachment to what we think they mean. We are convinced we know what they mean in and of themselves. But Jesus is teaching us that we have read a lot of false meaning into everything. We need to have a complete transformation where we open our minds up to the idea that maybe we do not know how things should go. Maybe I am just going to take your hand and walk into this in trust. We need to start somewhere with the unlearning process. The process of categorization is judgment. And like it says in the Bible, judge not. The Course makes it clear that all our pain comes from our own judging and categorizing, splitting and breaking apart. The good news is that the Holy Spirit has a different judgment that is also in our mind. We can totally tap into the Holy Spirit's judgment if we let go of our own judgments and get out of the way. That is good news. Friend, I was thinking... Any kind of specialization or expertise in anything is kind of like taking this to the nth degree where I know everything is to know about whatever. I know all the names for. The mind just wants to break it apart, break it apart, break it apart and then feel like it has a handle on one of these little parts. It can be an expert. David, like in the old days, general practitioners had to learn about all the parts of the body and how everything functioned together and perhaps also some psychological principles to help their patients get along in life. But the trend of medicine has been towards specialization of everything. Gone are the days of the general practitioner. Once again, the ego would teach you that you have to specialize in order to survive. That was the conflict I felt in my mind when I was in college. A little voice in my mind kept saying, Step back, think further, and see the big picture. And the other voice in my mind, sometimes coming from my parents or professors, would say, You are not going to make it unless you settle down and pick up an area of specialty, focus your attention and become specialized. For a long time there was a push-pull in my mind. The deeper I went, the more I questioned every field I was in. I questioned the assumptions. I could not stop questioning the meaning of life and decide to just be a good psychologist or a good educator or urban planner. I kept going deeper and deeper and finally I found the course which says that in order to learn this course you have to question every value that you hold. I thought, yes, that is what the little voice has been telling me all along. Am I nuts or not? The Course keeps saying 
that you have sanity within you. If you keep listening to the little voice and not to the other voices. <laughs>